Hello again and welcome back to my channel. I am going to carry on colouring in Cutesy Christmas Special 2020 edition um, in Colouring Heaven magazine and um, we're going to work on completing this page. So let's get started. I'm going to start first with the mouse. I'm going to fix around his eye here and finish off his hands. Then we will move on to the mitten, complete that and finally do the background. So I'm using a Mono Zero Tombow eraser just to erase what I can over here, but I'm going to just and it's not working so all right, so the colors that I use will be 10670 90% cool gray, 1081 chestnut, PC945 sienna brown, rose pink, PC1018 for the cheeks, PC946 dark brown, PC1070 30% French Grey, 10% French Grey PC1068 and then PC947 Dark Umber. And I'm going to start off first with PC1068 and I'm just going to do a base coat over here and just fix my mistake. Then I'm going to move in with a bit of the chestnut PC1081. And I'm using that feathering technique, trying to go in the direction of his fur so that it doesn't look odd and out of place. Next up, I'm going to use PC946 Dark Brown. I need to blend it out into the rest of his face. Then I'm going to use PC1070 and I'm going to use PC1068 and what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to lighten up this area because I don't want him too pinky and I'm using a bit of a hard pressure because I'm trying to really neutralize that red I'm going to try a bit of white because white also helps to, you know, just neutralize things. Okay, now I'm going to do some dark brown PC946. And I'm using a light pressure. Thank you. 
PC947 um, dark umber. Then I'll go back in with the 30% French Grey PC1070. I'll take the dark umber just very lightly. PC1070 PC1068 And to be honest, I don't think I'm going to get it much better than that at least he's not as pink. I mean, if you pick it up and hold it at a distance, you won't really notice it. Then I use PC101A, Pink Rose, for the cheeks. And then we can put some here in his mouth. I'm going to put a little bit of PC96 Carmine Red just in here. So let's go back here to his hands and layer up a bit more. So we'll start with a lighter color, PC1068. So I found his hands, um, I took on a smoother approach than a feathered approach because it isn't really, I mean, when I think of mice, I don't think of them having fluffy hands. They tend to have more smooth ha arms and legs, you know. Um, so I was going for that sort of approach, keeping his face more fluffy and then his... Um, ears and arms I was doing more of a, a shading than a, a hair texture and all I did on his um, hands and ears and arms what I just layered from my lightest to the darkest um, and I focus my browns and my dark grays here in the shadows. Next up, we'll use PC1070 French Grey. And I'm also making sure I'm going between the hairs on his face. But I don't want to go too hard because I don't want to lose um, the, the shadows on his hands and his arms. So just in circular, small little circles.
you can just vary the direction. I'm going to go back in with PC1068. I don't want to lose the highlights. So out, back, over and just smoothing it out. And I'm going to take the chestnut one, PC1081 and again I don't need to press terribly hard um, Just build up the layers lightly. PC nine four seven dark umber. Then PC nine four six dark brown. And I'm just building up those shadow ear areas. A bit of the 90% cool grey. And what I'm trying to do is just redefine the tufts of fur on his arm. You don't need a lot of the grey, it's more to just keep everything defined and not lose where your deepest shadows are. I just find it helps keep everything nice and crisp. I mean we can always, you can always go over it with white acrylic or a, a white um, signo pen, a white Posca pen and you could erase some of the black lines with that. So I'm using now the 10% French grey and I'm feathering it into the darker areas and out so that I'm not 
blending it out too much. And then here, I'm just going to melt it in. Now here was a bit more of a shadow, so I'm going to very lightly put in a bit of sienna brown, just up here. And then a bit of the dark umber, PC947. It mustn't be too dark, just a hint. And then PC1068. And you can just smoothen it out with, with that. So it's a faint shadow. Okay, I think that should do for now. Um, I will leave all the pencil numbers in the description below. And let's move on to the rest of the mitten. So the colors for the mitten are ro uh, Carmine Red, PC926, Crimson Red, PC924, I've got Black Raspberry PC1095 and Black Cherry PC1078. I find the Black Cherry works quite well for the shadows. It, um, I find the two combined can work really well. Okay, so we're going to start with PC926 and we're going to lay a base cover over the rest of the mitten. As you can see here on the side, I've um, already built up the colors and I've done that quite slowly but for the sake of completing um, the picture I'm going to just go ahead and take the carmine red and base over the rest of the mitten and again we're going to just use um, light circles Now there was a bit of a shine here, so I'm going to take PC938, or the white, <laughs> I need to buy a new white, and I'm going to just put a shine here with the white, and a bit here, okay. And then back with PC 926. So the reason I did that was just to keep the um, that light, almost like highlight going up the thumb. So down here at the bottom of the mitten and underneath the glove, we're going to not really use white to create um, highlights. We're going to keep those quite dark because um, the light is going to be hitting the top of the thumb more than the bottom. So it won't be needing as much um, highlight as this section or the, this section here. So the same applies for the bottom of the mitten. It will have a highlight, but it will be more of a carmine red highlight than a highlight with um, the white on top of it. 
um, and that's just because we want to keep um, keep it defined without creating the light coming in from all sorts of weird angles which wouldn't necessarily happen Okay, so now we're going to take PC1095 and we're going to go into all the shadows and because as I've mentioned before, you don't want to lose where the darker bits of the grayscale is, those shadowed areas. You want to keep them throughout your coloring. So here it's quite bright, um, there won't be a lot of shadows, so I'm going lighter because I want, I don't want as much of a contrast as the side. Let me know in the comments below if there is a specific page or picture you really would like to um, have as a color along. Um, I'm very happy to look and see if I've got it or if I don't, I'm happy to um, buy the book and or the picture and then I can create a color along video. The only thing I don't do is um, anything in the horror section or um, Halloween it's just a personal thing I really struggle with those sort of images um, but I mean I'm very happy to look into other things it's just that creepy horror kind of stuff doesn't really work for me so I don't really do um, skeletons very much. I'll be more open to colouring in a skeleton than I would be to colouring um, something with like dark fantasy or um, witches and that sort of thing. I've only got one picture of a witch that I would possibly consider colouring and that would only be to kind of face my own preconceived ideas and misconceptions. Um, I like you know, I do think it's very healthy to to look at those things and then, it, you know, sort of break off fear of what people would think or say. I think those sort of things. But um, I'm just, it's not my style. So if you're interested in anything other than dark fantasy, Halloween and creepy stuff, then I am really, really happy to... Um, do a specific color along. So again, lightly here, but here where the grayscale is darker, we'll go much darker. So yeah, if you want to do grayscale, another grayscale, maybe in a, a different style, a different artist, we can look at that. If you'd like to do a grayscale portrait, um, if you want to learn more on coloring flowers, um, maybe um, if you want to do people, um, yeah, we can do people. I've been doing a lot of people. Um, I do in 2022, I want to challenge myself to learning 
more about fur and, and creating realistic fur. So um, that's on my to-do list. But, you know, more my personal to-do list. Um, maybe you want to learn more on a specific medium. Um, or, um, I don't know, buildings. Maybe you want to do something with buildings. So have a think. If you're interested, let me know. And I will do my best to get you get set up and start a color along video okay so down here at the base of the mitten i want to put a bit more pressure because this is more shadow so i'm using a light to medium pressure Okay, now we're going to take PC9 to full carmine red and bum the shadow out a bit. PC1095 and then back PC924.
Okay, PC1078 Black Cherry. And again, going over all the shadowed areas. Right, in this area, we're going to use the Black Raspberry. Because remember, this area is much lighter than the rest of the mitten. So, again, I'm not pressing terribly hard. I'm just keeping the definition. And then I go back with PC1078 into the more black lined area and I'm using a medium to hard pressure especially where the, I know that the shadows are going to be And then if you just change the direction you cover, you can also get more, um, more pigment down. Okay, PC94, 
from the shadowed areas out. So what we're doing now is just building up the layers. Um, it's probably, we're about halfway done with this mitten now. You could possibly um, take markers, a, a red marker similar to your carmine red, and you could go over the, com the mitten completely in a red marker as a base coat, or you could probably do the same with an ink tent or watercolor, and then build up with pencils from there. And that could cut um, your coloring time on the mitten probably by a good third of your time so that is another option if you press for time and you want to get it done quicker that is one option i mean um colored pencil does take a lot longer to build up the intensity and the color okay this is the black raspberry pc1095 and i'm just going now as before over the shadows.
PC924 Carmine, no, sorry, Crimson Red. Uh, medium to hard pressure from the shadow out of it. Uh, no, let's take some white. Um, I want to define the highlights and then we'll go over with the carmine red. I'm kind of going with a yeah, uh, bit of instinct, I suppose, just in the middle or wherever the one knitted section touches the other. So, and I mean, if it's too much white, you can just use the car uh, carmine red and just go over it enough times and it will build layer over. We can put a little bit here and what it will do is just um, reduce the intensity of the carmine red. Because you will get some some light. If you use it all too dark, you'll lose that 3D feel. But if you have too much light, it won't look. It will look a bit odd. Um, okay. So then the. Oh wait, here. Sorry, the white up here. just have a feel for it wherever you think it needs uh, a highlight you know just put your white there and if you don't like it like I said you can just go over it with a harder pressure on the carmine red and it will layer over um, but if and if you don't have enough you can always put the white on over it okay so PC926 carmine red and we're gonna go with the medium to hard pressure and this is basically wrapping it up now. And then over the white you can just go lighter. Um,
So harder pressure in the shadow, lighter pressure over the white. And don't forget, there is also the um, white jelly roll or the white Signo pen you can use and you can always add more highlights with that. So, um, I, I don't think it's off, you know, if you make a mistake, it's always manageable. You can redeem it. You can work with it and, and fix it and get it to look something that you will actually be happy with or something that you could learn from um, not every mistake we make in our art ends up being um, a complete disaster so um, you know if you put too much color that's okay we can erase it we can add white pen to it we could use a white acrylic paint if you don't have a white pen I mean there's so many ways you can darken it with a bit of color you know like um, grays or blues or purples um, if there's too much of one color I mean that's how you learn what colors contrast well and, and neutralize different colors so like purple neutralizes yellow um, too much red and um, I don't know, I think it's green. I think green neutralizes red. Um, so don't be, what I'm saying is like, don't be discouraged if things don't go the way you planned. They don't give necessarily give up on it. Um, if you want to and you don't have the energy to fix it, that's totally fine. Um, but if it's a picture you really like and you really want to save it, you know, it, it can be saved. Um, I have a friend who um, she's an art teacher and I think she did her master's degree in line art or realism I don't know one of the two and she and I she taught my boys art um, for a few months I think it was last year so 20 2020 or 2019 and um, I think one of my boys made a few errors and was getting discouraged and um, even with me there were a couple of times that she sat with me and she just helped me and she was the one who taught me that um, art can be saved it can always be worked on a bit more and, and you can turn it into something that you're proud of and she also said to me you know look at your art and if you don't like it that's fine but see if you can find one or three things that you like about the picture and uh, several like quite a few years ago I think I was pregnant with my youngest child um, I was taking painting lessons um, a lady in my church at the time she had an art studio and she was an art teacher so I'd go and sit in her art studio and um, she would help me and I, I learned a lot from her I, I didn't learn enough to become a great painter um, I much prefer pencils but I, I remember I was trying to paint this galaxy I think it was a nebula and I was trying to copy it and it was just really not working and I honest to God hated the stupid picture <laughs> I was so frustrated and I said to her, I want to throw it away. And she said to me, okay, well, you're not going to throw it away just yet. Um, work with it. Put the picture, your reference photo aside and um, work with it. So I did. And I ended up creating my own abstract version of a nebula, which Actually, when you looked at it from afar, it ended up looking like a Astralitia, which is one of the flowers you get um, quite a lot of in South Africa. And I ended up giving it to a very good friend of mine. This is PC1078. 
because um, she just really loved it and I did hang it up uh, before I gave it to my friend I had it hung hanging in my lounge and I was able to walk away with something that I could hold my head high up I didn't like the fact that it was abstract at all I tend to paint abstract and and I use pencil more in realism I, I think because I understand pencil a bit better and I think that's the whole point of my story is when you're coloring something and it's not working out the way you want if it's really something that you want to say that you really want to turn into something you can be proud of then work on it because there is always a solution there's always a way that it can be saved and if nothing else you end up just learning something new from it and it grows you as an artist because let's face it coloring is an art it's a skill to color and lay down our picture you know the pigments beautifully to know where to put the colors and it all takes skill some people pc 96 some people yes they are more advanced in their skill uh, than others some apply themselves to learning the skill um, whereas other people might just be content with you know just carrying on their coloring and, and not really growing their skill and all of it is totally okay because it's about you being your authentic you and you enjoying the process of of art and um, all that the benefits that um, coloring brings so um, wherever you find yourself in your coloring journey know that you are creating art know that mistakes don't mean the end and know that wherever you are and whatever you want to get out of your art is completely perfect because it is suited to you and I think that's what the world really needs more of is people comfortable with who they are comfortable in getting out of of life and and their habit you know their, the stuff that they do the things that they want I mean life's too short to really be worrying about um, what people think or worrying about you know doing stuff that doesn't make you happy I mean you have to make yourself happy because nobody else is going to make you happy and to be honest I'm talking to myself as much as I am um, to anyone else because it, these are these are things that I need to put into practice in my own life and uh, talking out loud actually it's a nice way of reminding myself so by no means have I got this all worked out this is the white I'm just re using it to blend out the rest and keep the highlights on this area nice. So, um, yeah, so I, I by no means have, you know, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I'm still learning um, and I make mistakes so often. Um, and yeah, it's, but, but life is worth, you know, life is worth it. It's worth the, the lessons and I've just recently started realizing that um, people judge regardless so no point actually worrying about people's judgments just do what you need to do because it's your life and you're living in it no one else can live your life um, so you might as well just live it the way you want um, I mean yeah I could get philosophical and all of that but I I think it's pretty self-explanatory really oh this is really nice
right, then I'm just going to come here with the carmine red. I'll put a bit of white in here. So that's how I'm creating my highlights. <laughs> All right. Do we need more? To be honest, I could always put more in. Um, yeah, okay. I'm going to put a bit more carmine red in here. So what I'm trying to do more now is kind of burnish it. I like the look of the paper when it's saturated. But at this point, if you're happy with it, then um, feel free to move on to the background. Don't mind me. I'm just, this is what I do. I push and push the color because I, I don't like seeing the tooth of the paper. I want it completely saturated. And sometimes that's not always possible. I just notice it quite a bit with um, this paper. So I'm going to be alternating between the white and the carmine red. Sorry guys, it's dented over here. I mean, to be honest, the color is, is exquisite. I love the color. I'm just fiddling now. Okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. <laughs> All right, so now we need to do the circle and I'm going to do it the same colors as the um, the pom-poms and the hat. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next part where we'll do the snowflake uh, background and the background of the page. Um, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.